Hello, my name is Andrzej Gorodensky and I am the captain of Team Flipside Tactics. I uh, was playing uh, Counter-Strike 1.6 for nine years and I have been playing uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive for three, three years. When I was playing Counter-Strike 1.6, uh, uh, I played a lot against uh, Jonta, our um, coach, and against Markel, of my teammate. I was a 1.6 player players since uh, 2003, I guess. And in 2004, I met Igor Markelov. We played with him a lot, almost five years, actually. I was a captain of DTS, Chatwix, Hellraisers, um, KirchNet, and I played mostly of the time with Igor. Um, then when I uh, and, and we were actually competing with Blade, he was uh, playing with uh, Amazing Gaming, the main rival uh, of my team, one of the best teams uh, in CS region, uh, and uh, we had a lot of uh, matches and tournaments. We played against each other, actually, and like uh, I'm uh, the uh, team captain and he's a team captain of his team. Uh, we have a lot. Uh, intense and interesting matches and uh, a really interesting uh, match history against each other. Hello everyone, my name is Vladislav Nietzsche-Perchuk. Currently I'm a professional player, player for Flipside Tactics. I'm from capital uh, of Ukraine, Kyiv. I'm playing Counter-Strike 1.6 for four years. And now I'm playing uh, CSGO for uh, one year and two months. I met uh, John and uh, Blade in 1.6. We played together. Uh, it was uh, Kirchnet. Uh, first of all, I met John. We played together for one year, I think. It was a um, uh, young, uh, young team, I mean, four young talents with uh, one uh, experienced captain. Uh, then uh, Kirchnet uh, changed uh, Jonta to Blade and uh, I've played with Blade like two years I think in 1.6. We took a Bandic in a team and he was uh, uh, young, good showing uh, and a uh, good player and I guess I, I teached him a lot. Uh, before uh, I ended my 1.6 career. Uh, then I had a break about uh, four years. During this time I always had a conne uh, was connected with Igor and because we we're friends and we're, uh, I was asking him, him about uh, how he's doing, what about his team and all the stuff. Uh, and, and since uh, CSGO being uh, more interesting, more popular, it's uh, from uh, not so interesting to watch game, it became to, uh, uh, to a game with a really good physics, with a really good teams, very good uh, competition level, which is uh, more likely to 1.6 uh, and I guess it's more likely to watch and it's, it's really interesting and, and growing up, the whole scene. Uh, and I uh, asked Igor, uh, I caught him in Krakow uh, during the ESL1 in Katowice in March of 2015. Uh, I was in Krakow doing my business stuff and uh, he was in Katowice. I dropped him a message like, hey, what's up, how are you doing? Uh, let's, meet, uh, let's meet here and talk. Yeah, I'm Igor Markov. I'm playing for Flipside Tactics. And I've been playing Counter-Strike for about 15 years or so. Don't know exactly. Um, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, I like I love it. I've been playing with Blade uh, in the same team in back in 2008 uh, in the team uh, Amazing Gaming. Uh, it wasn't that long, uh, several several months, I don't know. Uh, and with Janta. I started to play with him, um, he's like uh, uh, living next to me in my city, so uh, we was friends for a long time before then and after the game. And uh, we played uh, for uh, Hell Risers uh, in the 2004, I guess, or 5. Um, 
I know them a lot, um, and I, I like them. I like to spend time with him and uh, with them. Uh, they are really cool guys. There was a team catch net. Um, after 1.6 times uh, in, C in, in CSGO, we didn't have like a good lineup, and we just were just playing with this clan tech for just for fun to try our potential. So I was trying this and that, and trying different players. And uh, in, after all, eventually uh, there was a lineup uh, with me, uh, Bondik, uh, Kucher, Fox, and Prizrak. And eventually. Some players have left, have left, and uh, we should uh, change, replace them with somebody. And there was a huge opportunity for me to pick up uh, Vault Edit, so I was like surprised that Vault Edit was playing um, Counter Strike, but he didn't have any team. So I knew it like for 100% that this is a chance to create a good team. Всем привет, меня зовут Георгий Вортедит Яскин. Я играю в команде Flipside. Мне 24 года, я живу в Москве. Как я познакомился с командой, с Блейдом в особенности, мне в Steam написал Fox, предложил в команду пойти, тогда я был без команды. Я подумал, что ребята опытные, сильные, и тут у меня есть шанс пробиться куда-то и выйти на новый уровень. И я согласился, и с тех пор я играю с Блейдом, это уже, наверное, пару лет, там, может, два года уже, может, чуть больше даже. Бондик пришел уже позже, он э, не играл в КС, э, но потом он начал играть в КС, и так как Блейд его хорошо знал, знал, что он хороший игрок, перспективный, и с ним получится много всяких интересных вещей, и позвал Бондика к нам в команду, так я познакомился с Бондиком. Actually, I watched Katowice, first major in Katowice, and I realized that uh, I want to play CSGO. Uh, I started play, uh, and I just typed to Blaze that I'm ready to fight. Then we made a team as that team. We played last uh, Cologne with uh, Flamey, uh, Flamey Ubik. Then, after uh, we didn't uh, go through the group, we realized that uh, we need some changes and uh, take on board uh, uh, Adren instead of uh, Ubik. Uh, we played the roster like four months and then uh, Flamey and Adren uh, left to Hellraisers and we took on board uh, Markelov and Simple. In last year, in, uh, I was playing for Hellraisers and uh, we had like a black line or something like that. We, uh, we played really bad. Um, we had really bad times. And I lost my motivation because we didn't uh, grow up in our game, in our play style, and our own individual skills. So I lost my motivation. Um, that's why I guess I've been kicked from HR in the beginning of January this year. And to a couple of hours later, after that, uh, Blade asked me to join the flip side, um, also known as Dead Team. On, on that time, uh, I agreed. Uh, I thought it, it's gonna be good to play with the uh, young players uh, with the fresh blood and. Uh, really experienced captain as Blade. So um, I agreed on that and I'm really glad that I made this decision. Actually, in that time, uh, Flipside uh, Tactics uh, has contacted us and we signed contracts um, and uh, actually we handle an organization. Hi, my name is Dana Kawar and I am the COO of the Flipside Tactics organization. That team is the team that our team was formerly known as. Um, we found out in January of this year that the Swedish roster that we previously had 
um, had chosen to go with an organization uh, more close to home rather than signing, re-signing their contracts with us. Um, so we were on the market for a new team um, and that team almost immediately came to mind because they had played in our Gamers Impact uh, charity tournament which we had hosted in November of the previous year. So about simple. About simple I can say that the most uh, annoying thing was uh, when he was toxic because he was when when you when you want, when you want to concentrate to focus on on the game and to think about your opponent uh, somebody is always like ruining your game he's some, somebody is always telling you that you're wrong uh, you need to struggle with not with your opponent but with your teammate and you're fighting for like for two sides and the most uh, like Disappointing thing was simple was insulting his players, his teammates like really uh, bad. So, so he was trying to find some weak uh, sides of your personality, and he was trying to to kick uh, in the same point like uh, to do something like to harm you, you know, like to. So you uh, you could see that he was really toxic during the game and he was trying to to infuriate you like to make you really mad uh, and you can't win if you are like outrageous inside like if you, if you have like a, a r real storm in your, in your mind you can't be uh, like cold-blooded uh, analyst, analyst who can study your opponent during the game. We were uh, doing a lot of preparation and we were, we were practicing for uh, Dreamhack qualifiers and tours and uh, of course uh, sometimes when you are uh, playing practice games sometimes uh, things are not working and uh, it's pretty common and uh, it's okay because it's preparation and you're trying to learn something new. Uh, but he started to uh, raging for his teammates yep. and uh, I realized that it's not well, uh, because he wants to do it. It's uh, something that uh, he can stop. It's just part of, uh, part of himself. We had known even before Copenhagen Games in April that there was some tension building between Simple and the rest of the roster. Um, this was sort of a constant point of discussion between me and the leadership on the team, um, between me and our coach. It was something that we had sort of foreseen and saw growing and growing resentments, growing tensions, growing arguments. We tried absolutely everything from upholding contract penalties to threatening benching to just everything that we could think of to try. But the problem with a situation like this is if the sort of person that's causing the issues is also in denial that they're causing issues. It becomes a very, very difficult situation to fix. Um, the real point of no return, I think, happened about halfway through June when uh, we were qualifying for ESWC and uh, the captain and I, Blade, sat down and spoke together um, and we had a long conversation that it looked like ESWC was going to be the turning point of the situation. We knew the tension had built up and we knew even then that if we had made it to uh, ESL after ESWC, we were going to be playing for ESL. And we knew that to have the best shot possible of making it to ESL Cologne, we would have to be practicing as much as possible with DAFPOS. So we knew that immediately following ESWC, we were going to start playing with DAFPOS for an entire month. So we knew the frustration from that plus the built-up frustration was more than likely going to lead to some kind of blow up with Simple. So that was really, I think, the point of no return. And well, I mean, as everybody sort of saw after ESWC, we, Blade turned out to be completely correct in his predictions. So. Hello, everybody. My name is MJ Finch. I've been a behavioral therapist for about five years now. Uh, I work with individuals with various psychological disorders ranging from ages 10 to about 25. 
Uh, I've also been a part of Flipside Tactics since the very beginning of the organization, working as a manager for them um, back in 2013, which is kind of crazy to think about. We worked really hard with Simple. Um, I didn't really get to work with him directly, just due to the language barrier, but I did work with their manager on some strategies and ideas that they could, you know, give to Simple to help him control a lot of his impulses, a lot of his anger, a lot of his you know, resentment, things like that, that are very common, that happens with a lot of people, and especially for people who are young. Um, he was just in a unique place because being that young and having that much star power is just a really difficult thing to overcome. And I think over time he will be able to kind of reconcile a lot of his issues that he's very well publicly said that, you know, he knows what he's done wrong and he's trying to work on it. And I think, you know, that's the first step to recovery and you know, I wish him the best to be able to kind of get over that. My name is Hector Rosario. I'm the founder of F3 on Dota and in esports in general. People know me as Frost. So the conversation that we had amidst all the turmoil and after all the HLTV stuff that Simple posted, and um, that's how we found out, by the way, um, was pretty simple. Me and Dana and him in a hotel room, each of us talking about you know our, our feelings, our thoughts, where we are, where we want to be, the future, the past, all of that. And during that conversation, I realized that there was something really wrong here because when we asked him, okay, you want Blade and you want Markloff removed because you think they're no longer good and you need better players around you, we asked him who you would replace them with in his region and even internationally. And we said, what in-game leader would you like to play for and who do you think is better than Blade that's available? He didn't have an answer. And once again, with Markloff, what support player do you think you would like to play with? Didn't have an answer. Keep in mind that uh, Spencer, uh, when uh, Kiko and I uh, talked on the way back from the thing, uh, probably immediately after me and Blade talked, you know, Kiko was telling me how Markloff was the best support player that he's played with. So I have this in my mind when I'm having this conversation with Simple. And I realize Simple doesn't have a clue. This is just him being angry and him overreacting to a situation that he's probably going to regret. But I don't think he realized at that time the repercussions of his actions. I don't think he... The, the, the truth is, I think a lot of it is pride at this point because, you know, post all of the things that have happened in the past and since, um, you know, we have a very good relationship with Simple and he's very uh, fond of Dana especially. Um, but I think that he was lost in that hotel room and we tried, we thought actually we salvaged the situation and then we come to find out he goes home and once again we have another topsy-turvy of emotions. I guess someone made a comment he didn't like and you know he flips a wig. I think when Simple left it really wasn't that big of a deal to me. Uh, you know, yes he's a very talented player, yes it's a big loss losing somebody that skilled, but at the same time it wasn't something that happened just out of the blue. Everybody knew there were issues, there was tension, there was, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, and I think one thing that I've learned over, you know, our time in Counter-Strike now over the past, like, year and a half or so is that personalities don't mesh a lot of the time. And there's a lot of really skilled players that just can't drop the ego and cause a lot of tension within the team. And it's very unfortunate, but I feel like it's more common than not. And so losing him, yes, hurts on paper, because if you look at stats and things like that, it hurts. But the team, it's still a team game. The team feels like they are better as a group without somebody constantly causing issues. And I think at the end of the day, a lot of these guys have earned the right and the respect to be able to make that judgment call. Someone like Markov, who's been around the scene for a very long time, he knows how much of a team game it is. And when you have a team that's working together, you have teammates you can trust, you don't have to worry about issues. I mean, that really goes a long way. And, you know, moving in the future, I hope Simple kind of takes the time to step back and figure out kind of where he was going wrong, how he can fix it, and kind of get to a better place. Um, but for the immediate future for Blade and Markloff and the rest of the guys, I think just working on as a team, they're a team, it's a team game. And getting to that point where they can trust all five players on the team and really work together, it's only going to benefit them long term. It was a no-brainer for me for a couple of reasons. One, when you sign a roster, you don't sign a single player. You have a responsibility to all five players on your team. Um, 
So when a player puts down any type of ultimatum like this, any type of situation like this where they're threatening to leave if you don't make changes or replace other players on the roster, it's a non-negotiable situation just based on principle and based on your responsibilities contractually to other players. You just you can't throw away people just because one person on the team is mad at them. Specifically in a situation like this where their sort of complaints about these players were completely unfounded. So the decision was sort of many-folded. Um, we understood that Simple was frustrated and we understood that he wanted to try something else, which is why we, while he's still under contract with us, allowed him to play for other rosters to sort of test the waters for himself. Um, Mind you, we don't want to be unfair to any of our players. We don't want to keep somebody on this roster who really, really doesn't want to be here. So, I mean, if he wants to be traded, if he wants to anything like that, of course we're going to try to make that possible for him. Um, outside of that, you can't really get on social media or anything like that and start raging at your teammates and raging at your organization and all of those things and expect to be treated <laughs> super friendly or super kindly and terminate a contract because of that. So. That was really the major turning point. We try to do right by him as much as physically possible, really, and as much as we can contractually do. But so eventually we were playing, uh, eventually Simple has left the team, and we ended up with four players uh, on, the, on the one side. We were really disappointed and frustrated because he left the team and now we are four. We can we need to find another player, like we need to start from the beginning because each, uh, each time when you change some, somebody you need to create uh, another like, mechanism, like another team, like one element is out, you need to build something again uh, from the beginning. And uh, we were really frustrated because of that, but at the same time, the same time we, had, we had a huge relief, like such a uh, toxic player left the team, now he's not insulting anyone, now we are playing like a team, everyone is listening to me, and no like uh, free for all running around the map, like no force buying suddenly during the game, and so if you have a game plan and everyone is stick to it, everything is fine, man. but when somebody is not doing that, it's ruining everything. One thing in F3 had that we were really polite, simple, and uh, didn't say much to him when he uh, was arguing, screaming, and s kind of stuff. Um, yes, yes, we, uh, yeah, uh, we so. needed to be more tough. I can say for sure that in the very first uh, weeks in the F3, I I thought that even 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 before uh, we bring uh, the simple in uh, in F3, um, I thought it's gonna be a bad idea because of his personality. Uh, so I wasn't the guy who. Uh, who told Blade to pick him up. He was just very, very frustrated with his situation and he understood his frustration, so we're trying to let him learn. He's very young in the community, he's very young in this scene, he's supremely talented. I mean, that's completely undeniable and he's a genuinely good person. Like, this is a kid that we go to events to and he's handing out all the change and cash in his pocket to random people on the street that look like they need it. So he's a genuinely good person on the inside. He's just a highly competitive human being. So, I mean, with that competition comes certain types of energy. And I think that all he needs to do to really be one of the greats in this game is to be able to harness that energy and rather than turn it into toxicity and rage at your teammates, turn it into a drive to play better individually and a drive to, uh, stand up and step up for a team that he perceives doesn't have that same ability. Я спал. И тут приходит сообщение. Ну, начинаю читать. Go в команду. Нам нужен игрок. А я не знаю, кто это, что за человек. Захожу к нему 
посмотреть на изображение и что-то узнаю. Потом оказывается это Блейд, он позвал играть меня на отборочные. Ну, я считаю, что первое время, пока я играю про сайт, я не справлялся с своей обязанностью, но я уверен, что с каждым днем будет все лучше и лучше. Под гнетом, давлением таким всем играть, конечно, неприятно, но я буду сильным. You know, under Blade's tutelage, both coaching Hellraisers, and when he found him originally, um, Blade uh, had a lot to do with that development. And it's unfortunate that in this 24-7 social media circus that people don't really acknowledge the fact that Blade has now found World Edit, uh, Janta found Bondic, Blade coached Bondic, Blade found and, co and is coaching Davkost, Blade found, developed, and coached Simple. And these are talents now that everyone knows, they're household names, whether people uh, like them or not, they're super young, very talented, they're playing at this level, and yet Blade and Markalov don't get the credit for being mentors. Uh, when people saying that uh, Flipside without Simple is nothing, it's like, uh, it's ridiculous, it's, re it's really stupid, I don't know how to say it in different word, but it's really stupid because uh, uh, Counter-Strike is a team, uh, team it's for, first of all it's a teamwork and when somebody is playing by you know, on his own then you have four plus one and we have a good uh, and great we have a great players in the team. So, um, speaking about the young blood in our team, it's uh, basically uh, Bandic and Word Edit. Um, uh, I, I knew Bandic uh, like a little bit before from 1.6, but now I see that he's a really, really talented player. Uh, he has uh, like huge motivation to win, to progress, and to win. And uh, speaking about word edit, um, he is a really specific guy, but he's also very talented. Um, he always wants to win no matter what, no matter against what, what team we're playing. Uh, he just wants to show his best. I think a lot of the times people tend to write off our guys. Um, this isn't a new thing. It happened with all of our teams since we've been in Counter-Strike. Uh, a lot of it's because we're generally a really new organization in the grand scheme of things. I mean, we're going against organizations that have been around way longer, um, you know, with bigger budgets and more teams and more history and things like that. And that's totally fine. Like they've earned that right. I think for us, a lot of the times is we step into these kind of quote unquote underdog roles but at the same time, we're very prepared. We have experienced players. We have determined players. Uh, and that allows us to be in a good position to kind of be right there. Like I said earlier, we were right on the cusp of making it a top eight twice now. Um, that's a really big deal. And so, you know, on one hand, it's unfortunate that people kind of doubt us and think that we can't do it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just their opinion. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't really affect us in any way. We're going to keep doing what we do. We've been doing this for a couple years now. Our players have been doing it, you know, way longer than we have. But at the end of the day, some random commentator's opinion or fan's opinion doesn't affect the way we do business. And so we're going to keep working hard. We're going to keep grinding. And, you know, sooner or later, that's going to flip. They're not going to put us as the underdogs. And, you know, when that day comes, we'll be there and we'll just keep on doing what we've been doing. So. I mean, it's frustrating that we get overlooked. We've been in very, very frustrating situations where tournaments where we have placed in, where we have come top 10 in and top five in have overlooked us, not only for direct invites, but also for direct invites to offline qualifiers um, and invites to closed qualifiers and have requested that we qualify like everybody else, despite our previous uh, finishes at their own events. Um, that's a very frustrating thing to see. Tournaments even skirt their own rules because of hypes and incorrect perceptions. But 
At the end of the day, the onus is on us to really continue to perform how we've been performing, to continue to have the successes we've been having, and hopefully overcome these bad perceptions. I I'm really don't care what, uh, what the people say, uh, like, uh, without simple, we're nothing, we're um, tier four, five team in the world, we can't do shit without him. I just don't really care. Uh, even though, um, even even the um, tournament organizers tell us that you, you don't have simple anymore, you, you want to get invite, and it's just so fucking ridiculous to me. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, people are so stupid. Uh, they don't know uh, the facts, the team chemistry, what is it exactly, and what uh, what it. Uh, what it means to in the in the sport uh, to have a good chemistry in a team. So uh, numbers and statistics uh, doesn't mean everything, and people just don't understand it. Because uh, the team consists of different part of games. Of course, uh, the guys who are playing with Op, the guys who are going enter fragging, the guys who is being supported on the, their bomb size, uh, they get more. Fun, glory, more, uh, more frags, and more people watch uh, for them. And it's sad to see uh, the players who do a lot of, really, uh, who do a lot by supporting, by uh, going first, and, and for example, uh, jumping uh, from the corner, so uh, the enemy will turn off their crosshairs to the guys who jumps and the other teams just uh, and the other teammates just go in, go in and take the kill uh, uh, these players get like nothing respect people see like a uh, support player get a like 10 frag 10 frags the uh, one or even two maps and they think oh my god this guy sucks but no one mentioned that uh, he does a lot of efforts uh, which uh, which actually uh, is a whole team game you know it's like in Dora and uh, in uh, CS both games are uh, a, a bit similar to the rolling because uh, th there are uh, always guys who play more support and guys who are playing like carries and all the stuff and uh, I think community should know and uh, sh uh, should find out uh, more about what's important in the team like the stress their uh, team play stuff and flashes smokes and, and, and all this too often in esports, there's this this common motif that I keep seeing, and it's we glorify all the bad things about esports in general. We glorify all the betting, all the skins, all the match fixing, all the drama, all the team shuffles, all the bad organizations, the mystery players. We 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 spend days and days and days discussing this ad nauseum. Right? It's all you see on your social medias, it's all you see on your reddits, it's all you see everywhere. And then we somehow seem to vilify all the people that do the right thing, say the right things, are very professional, keep to themselves, don't get into trouble, but because they're not flashy and they're not cocky and they don't run their mouths and they don't talk all the time, but we just disrespect them and think it's okay to use them as punching bags and think that uh, it's, uh, like it's okay to overlook their accomplishments for the lesser accomplishments of much louder individuals. And I think for us, that's been probably the, the most difficult thing to take is we're listening to this and we know what's going on in-house and because of our ethics and morals, we feel like, you know, uh, it's not good to set an example, especially for the older guys. We've had this discussion with Merrick and Blade. We don't want to show the young guys World Edit Blade, I mean, um, World Edit Mondic and Davkos that this is how you handle these problems. We don't have a lot of uh, popular and big names. So we need, uh, the only thing really we need to work on is our game. I can only imagine how tough it is for both such players as Bondic and Davkost. They are really good players and everyone's, nobody see, sees uh, these players, their potential. Uh, when, uh, you know, when there is a such a good fragger like uh, uh, simple in your team, 
and other players like Bondik, um, even Markelov, like four four time world champion, they fade out. You know, they like stay in his shadow all the time. But this potential is still there. It didn't uh, like disappear. Bondik still has potential, and now. I think he will show the potential and he will prove that uh, he was the most consistent player of, uh, from, of flip side. I think that uh, we are the most underrated team here. Probably not the most, but one of them. So it's pretty hard for us sometimes, but in the other hand, it's pretty good because uh, someone thinks that you're shit and. Uh, at the same time, you're pretty confident against them. Что-то пошло не так. У французов уверенность огромная, а у нас наоборот спад. Мы инферно. Это наша самая худшая карта из всего пика. Именно она она попалась. Закончили сторону 12-3. Думали сейчас сделать камбэк, но они были очень уверены и не дали нам без шанса. Versus Envious happened bad. Best of one Inferno T side without a pistol round. That's why. And uh, we love the pistol round. We won the uh, first gun round and then lost the next one, uh, which is broke our economy completely. So uh, after the Five, five to one or six to one, they started to feel their game, feel feel their aim, and we was lost after the score like uh, six to one. We just lost uh, our like spirit and game. We couldn't fight it. We trying to go A, trying to go right middle, left middle, B, fake. Uh, and sometimes we we needed like just a little more luck to to one around. Like even uh, if if LBK won't have an EK when he was holding B by himself when when uh, we was faking, uh, he won't uh, hit the, uh, those two one shot. Um, for me and where that is. Um, like small things like that, it costs you a lot of rounds and the game overall. We again lost the pistol round in the city side. And on that point, the game was over already. So it's all about the confidence in yourself and the pistol rounds on the map like Inferno. We weren't uh, that upset. Because uh, we knew that uh, the group is going to be shuffled and we, can, uh, we will be playing with another opponent. And uh, when there was uh, information about that we're going to play with most sports, we actually uh, thought like it's uh, probably it's the toughest opponent of uh, any other who, can, who could uh, play with us. But still we knew that we can 
to win them. Uh, we played them online uh, on the Contribute League, I guess, or CEO, I don't remember actually. But we won 2 0, and uh, we knew that uh, they got a young guys too who, gotta, uh, who are not uh, that good on the pressure, probably. Uh, and they are still a, a young team with a good leader, Gobi, who. Uh, and they got a, a lot of to uh, to work to to be the like uh, really really good. They've got their hands on this. It's all under control. I think you've really just told the whole story there for Mouse Sports. I don't think we can really go much more on that side. What do you think about on the side of flip side, Henry, uh, for this one? Of course, Mouse also getting the side of CT this time around. Yeah. So like statistically speaking, it is um, flip side's best map. But like we said, they're missing some key elements there. Simple eco, for example, that's where the stats came from. So I really do favor Mouse Sports going into this one for well, the reasons uh, we discussed. Before. In game with small sports, when we were pretty confident and we just knew that we can easily win this game. But actually, I don't think that it was easy game. It was hard, 16 to 14, and yeah. But we should realize that uh, we are in Germany and Mouse Sports is a German team, so it's much easier for them to play here with the uh, crowd cheering for them and yeah, and we just uh, hopefully we won it and we all satisfied it about it. We had a chance, we could actually win that game like 16 to 8, but on the pistol hang around on the, on the city side, we had a lot of mess in the team speak, and we lost around like 5 to 2, it, and it uh, let down a bit our like uh, consistent emotional uh, behavior, and it was a bit a bit messy the second side, but. Uh, on the last round, when, had, when we were leading 15 to 14, uh, Bondi clutched one with two, and it was great to, path, to go through the mouse. <laughs> that was super close. So can they actually hold this now? Yeah, it's a big question, is it? Fallen and Cold are the two players holding for the T-side. Bondic and Markov looking for that retake together. Fallen holding the cross. He peeks out, he finds Markov. Oh, goes to get in. That Especially as they played very, very good that time. And uh, Fallen was great. He did so important kills for his team. Actually, I was a bit raging at that time because uh, on T-side, when I, I, I played T-side, every spot where I come, he was there and he killed me. Like, it was on A-side or on B-side, doesn't matter. And I was shocked a bit. Hopefully we did a comeback on our CT side and um, at one moment, I thought that it's our game, it's our top eight, but it didn't. Sorry, guys. Sorry. А против бразильцев это вообще no comments. Счет 15-12, а дальше вы видели все сами. But Markov now has three players behind him, and here we go. Markov at least gets one, but bolts denies any more. And now 4v4, Blade starting to go hunting. But that bomb is already crossing over towards the site. It's made it there. The bomb could go down any second, but Blade is not done. He wants his team to make it further, but no, Fallen and Fur do what's required. And now just Davkos alive. It's Luminosity, one kill away. But there he is, that there is our chance to get top eight teams in the world and it was really a huge chance for us and I don't know what actually went wrong that time but I know I'm still sad about that game because we had a lead like 15 to so to 12, I think, and actually 
I knew and I know now that it was our game and our spot in playoffs. But now, now it feels really sad that we lost. We had a game in our hands and we just we just give it away. Uh, leading 15 to 12, uh, some of the guys just yeah, caught themselves on the mind like, yeah, we're in a top eight. It's only three round, but. Uh, some mistakes, some things uh, were did by us and it was horrible. And now uh, watching, the, uh, being in the uh, LAN access area, uh, watching the team, uh, the teams go into the stage, watching the people uh, cheering and all the uh, noise, all this uh, fans screaming, like supporting the teams, it feels on the same time great, that is uh, so huge to see us, but it feels horrible uh, knowing that it's, we could take at least one round of three to be there. And it could be a great experience for young guys like Davros, World Lead, Bandic. Uh, just, we knew that if we're gonna uh, go past through Brazilians, we're gonna play with Fnatic. And it's like we don't have a lot of chance against them, but uh, having that experience playing on this huge stage with a lot of people uh, screaming and shouting and cheering, it could be so important for the young guys. Um, yeah, and it really sucks to see that we miss that opportunity. When I saw Game of Luminosity, I don't know, I have feelings like I just want to cry, really cry, because I can't feel the same uh, atmosphere they, they did, yeah, it was awful feelings, but in the other hand it's motivated me and I hope my team more, and I think we will come back, come back stronger, and we will do our top eight teams and probably quarterfinals. Uh, yeah, but still there are uh, those type of uh, situations uh, makes you stronger actually, and especially for again, again, uh, especially for young guys. For they see that it's uh, there are some more things that uh, not only the game is more a lot about your psychological and emotional behavior. Uh, for the game, uh, which is really important, and we're gonna work on it too. So, is everything is future? Everything is in future for us, and I hope we will improve. We'll work on all aspects of the game, on the individual performance, on the uh, team play, on our communication, on everything, on our psychological uh, state of mind. And I'm sure that uh, we can be uh, one, of the, one of the greatest teams if we're gonna work ourselves, if we're gonna work hard, it's, it's gonna be cool. So it's everything in the future for us.